What's up, everybody? Welcome to the first official episode of Revolve TV. I'm your host, Austin Kroninger, and today I'm going to be showing you how to auto to. All right, so like I said in the introduction already, I'm going to be showing you how to auto-tune inside Adobe Audition. Now, you want to make sure you have Adobe Audition um, so that you can follow my steps precisely. Um, this is going to be just a quick, easy way to do it, and a lot of this is going to be on how you do it yourself. Uh, let me real quick go ahead and tell you something about um, how uh, this auto-tune effect. Um, the effect is going to really turn out... Um, to be the best quality whenever you put a lot of time into the audio before you put it in. <laughs> that was a long drawn out way of saying basically you want to make sure that before you import your audio that you have recorded it the best way you, you could possibly um, create. Um, you want to be using the best mics you have, um, the best pop filters, windscreens, making sure you're in a great environment that's not loud or buzzy. Um, you want to make sure basically that it's as perfect as it's going to get because any just little detail such as like a TV in the next room, the auto-tune effect will pick up and make it bounce like crazy. Um, and like it'll actually sound like this. Oh my gosh. Okay, so um, now before we get going, I'm going to just show you um, my file here that I already imported inside of Adobe Audition. As you can tell, um, I have... It's just the Oh My Gosh uh, intro part that Will I Am sings to the Oh My Gosh by Usher and Will I Am. Um, it's just that part, but I sing it five times. Now the reason I sing it five times is um, the first time you're gonna be. I'm a little nervous when I sing. I know that, um, and then going over it five times, I know somewhere in there there's got to be something that I like. So um, after pre-listening to it, this is the one right here that I like. Um, if you're wondering actually how I'm using how I'm uh, highlighting over this. Um, it is just the select option here, the T. If you click T, that's going to have uh, you click the time selection. Um, or you can, like I said, click up there. Um, and then to get rid of that little thing, click away. But since I'm only going to be working in this area, I'm just going to highlight the area I want. And then if I oh click my play, gosh. if I click play, it's going to um, just play in that certain area. Now, as you could hear, um, my voice, this is this is the track that I have. Oh my gosh. Now, this is not my favorite type of music to sing, so <laughs> don't tell me I'm a terrible singer in the comment section or anything. Um, it sounds rough right now, but trust me, it's going to sound really good when we're done with this effect. So, um, there is a little pitch jump here, which I, of course, I didn't quite want, but as you can oh hear, my gosh. right oh. there, I just jumped pitches. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, but let me go ahead and show you how to actually uh, do this effect. So, um, by selecting the area you want, if you don't want just a certain area, just go ahead and click away from that and make the white thing go away, and it'll do the effect to everything. But I just want to do it in this area um, for my own picky purposes. So, I'm going to have that area highlighted, click Effects, and then go over here to where it says Time and Pinch. Um, when you're in Time and Pinch, just go to the right a little bit, and it says Automatic Pitch Correction. Now, um, it's going to have your default options, which will look like this right here, and it's going to be in the key of C major. Now, if you're putting this to background music that's already made on a song or that you've made yourself, you want to make sure that um, you are singing, um, recording your voice or the audio track like I have here. You want to record in the key that you're singing. Don't record it in a different key. Um, actually, let me show you. I recorded this same part. Instead of it being an E minor, I just recorded it in an E, and it it was poppy and like all over the place. So here, let me go ahead and play that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so as you can tell, you really want to make sure that you're singing in the right key. Uh, it's it's going to suck if you don't. Um, so it'll go ahead and put you in the key of C major. Uh, go ahead and click play and you can hear what that does just to that. Oh my gosh. Okay, so as you can tell, oh it's my kind, of, it kind of already put a little effect to it. But like I said, I didn't sing in the key of C major. Um, they also have different presets up here if you want to use one of those, but um, I'm just going to show you how to do it from where it's at. So, let's say you are singing in the key of E, which I am key of E minor, actually. Um, key of E minor, and um, you want it to be as powerful as you can get it on the auto-tune. Uh, you want to bring up the uh, sensitivity all the way, which is going to pick up even the tiniest little change in pitch. And then you're also going to want to bring up the attack, which makes it like, oh, it's going to switch really quick. 
instead of it being like a long drawn out thing, it's going to be really quick. And let me just show you like an example of that. So here's the slow. My gosh. Okay, it's really oh. like weird, kind of bumpy. Now if you put it on the fast, oh my gosh. You just you can tell oh just a difference in how quick it, it'll change and move. Um, so basically this is the settings I want because that song by Will I Am and Usher, they're all really, really, um, it's like really auto-tuned out, really reverbed out, and that's kind of the look I'm looking for. Uh, if you're just wanting to like maybe correct some minor stuff, uh, I'd just throw it in the key that you're in, and I'd keep a lot of this stuff like sensitivity down, um, or even just the C major right here really just kind of touches up a little pitch issues, and that's kind of, kind of nice. Um, so it's all about the look you're going for, and go ahead and like set your settings to the look you're going for. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just change mine back and uh, show you how to do the rest of this tutorial. Okay. All right. So um, basically, now as you can tell, gosh. I have this awesome oh robotic y gosh. sound voice now. Um, it kind of, even that pitch jump now sounds really good. Um, so. Now, there's one other thing, because this is kind of lacking, like, this, this stage presence and stuff that, um, like, Will I Am had when he was singing it. Um, it's going to be reverb. Uh, tons of reverb is what they use. So if you um, don't know what I'm doing, go ahead and up here. Make sure you still are in the selection area you want. Click Effects. Click, um, oops, sorry. Uh, click Effects. Click Reverb. So go over to Reverb and click Full Reverb. That's the one that you want. Um, I already have some settings here that I like. Uh, I already pre-rendered it, but if you don't have, like, um, of course you're going to want to make your own up, uh, but you can just, it's a good place to start, like, at the default. So, um, right here is the default, 73.1, 31.5, 27.8, uh, but I really like this to be at 170, um, and then this one here be at 35, and then this one here at 30. Uh, it's going to be hard to show the changes because it's got to calculate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're not oh going to be able to hear the changes in this part of it, but um, when, when I go back out and apply the effect, you'll be able to hear it. It's pretty nice. But like I was saying with the reverb, you want to make sure that you find something that you like because um, it's, it's just dependent on, of course, the song you want. And you can just mess with these sliders all day. They have some pretty cool um, presets already lined up here. Um, especially if you're going to be like in, in, like in a gym or something that will help, help a lot. Or you want to sound like you're in a gym or a chamber or anything really. <laughs> but I'm going to go um, back to the, my settings here at 170, 35, and 30. Okay. So then I'm going to click apply. Now... Now let's go ahead and listen to it. My gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, now that sounds really awesome. It sounds exactly how I wanted it to sound. Um, and uh, when you put it to the music, it's going to blend really, really well. Um, this next part is going to just be kind of a quick sum up of how to add it, um, how to do like a multi-track. Uh, I hope most of you know how to do multi-track if you have this. Um, so go ahead and uh, click multi-track. Um, go ahead and I'm going to just call this tutorial um, for, I guess, time's sake here and click OK. Actually, no, <laughs> I guess I already have one called tutorial. Um, let me just call it auto tune tut for tutorial and click OK. Sorry, I just punched my microphone. All right, so then it's going to bring up this new multi track section, which is super awesome. Um, so you want to insert your, of course, the file you just worked on, which will be the one right up in here. Mine is named STE for some reason. And then I'm going to click OK on that. It's going to bring that in. And then you want to bring in the background music, which if you scroll all the way down on my desktop, it's that Usher song. And just so you know, I would probably never sing an Usher song, but just because of the awesome reverb, it's cool and intense. Okay, so now that um, both tracks are in, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, clean them up and line them up. Now, I didn't do anything special to line these up, so it's going to be really painful for me. Um, I'm just going to kind of guess just to save time because i got to get going. But um, So let's say, the, remember I had my five little blotches of sound here, my waveforms. This is the one that we were going to be using. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete, just delete if I can. The others, because I, I wasn't going to use those anyway. 
Now, if you have trouble seeing the waveforms, you can always click plus, and wherever your little red cursor thing is, if you're not have a selection area, um, it's that's where um, that's where it's going to zoom in at. So, as you can see, you got all these little waveforms. You know, um, so lining up the music is is something that uh, you should think about before you, uh, of course, put it all together. Um, it's not something I thought about. Don't know why, but I didn't. Um, so I suggest like singing into like a track of, that's got headphones in your ear and then just kind of record out that way. Um, <laughs> but you could do whatever you want, really. All right, so let's just go ahead and see how it sounds where it's at. I don't know. This is a guess. Oh my gosh. All right, guys, so that's uh, basically it for today. Um, next week, I'm either going to show you how to color grade in uh, After Effects or I'm going to show you some awesomeness in Photoshop and show you how to design your own um, green screen backdrop. So uh, you choose, just go ahead and let me know in the comment section what you think would be the best fit for next week. Um, I appreciate you guys for watching and I'm Austin Crowding here with Revolve TV. Have a good day. Oh my gosh. Baby, let me I'm gonna let that go. Oh my.